Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. It's his way back. Walk him up. Rip Taylor. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dodger Heads presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Matthew Moreno. And yes, I'm still filling in for Jeff. He's uh, in the process of moving and we're hoping to have him back this week and he'll get uh, squared away. And I know that he needed uh, some some time to get situated. I don't know, Blake, I don't know if, how many times you've moved, but it's definitely not easy no matter uh, how much, how many times you may have done it. Yeah, I've never moved. I've lived here 26 years and pretty okay. happy about that. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're fortunate. I've, I've moved around and it seems every time you could plan and you think you have the best uh, approach and strategy and it just is difficult every time. But anyway, let's get into today's video and we're talking uh, Dodgers signings. Obviously their, their relatively quiet off season has been well documented, but they have added Noah Syndergaard and Shelby Miller to one year deals. As long as, as well as Jason Hayward to a minor league contract with a non roster invite to spring training, and what the three of the players sort of have in common right now or this off season is they've been working with uh, Dodgers coaches, and obviously for Syndergaard and Shelby Miller that entails the pitching coaches, whereas Jason Hayward's been on the hitting side, and Hayward recently posted on Instagram uh, kind of different pictures, and one of them was of him at Dodger Stadium, so he's been working out in L.A. Whereas Miller and Syndergaard have been uh, at Camelback Ranch, Shelby Miller specifically, it was uh, reported through the LA Times in an interview uh, that he is kind of doing hands-on stuff with Connor McGinnis and he's in contact with uh, Mark Pryor, obviously the Dodgers pitching coach. So like considering the the Dodgers uh, history of success with helping pitchers sort of get back on track or turn things around, how encouraged are you to hear that Miller and Syndergaard are kind of getting a jump start on that before spring training? It's pretty encouraging, especially for a Shelby Miller, I think, because he's the guy they went out and targeted specifically early in the offseason. And when they have a pitcher they want to acquire and make sure to get him, like, I'm pretty confident they're going to be able to work with him well and get him back on track. Syndergaard, he's had the talent before. We all know he's been an ace. It's just about him getting back his velocity. So if they can help him regain some of that, he could be a great signing. Yeah, I think you bring up a great point about, you know, kind of targeting Shelby Miller early on because it sort of reminds me a little bit of the Andrew Heaney signing where you know they got that in before the lockout and Heaney that he admitted that he wanted to also you know get his contract in place kind of early on and just not have to worry about things and where this is different of course is once the lockout started Heaney and the Dodgers coaches couldn't have any communication whereas with Miller not only like you said did he sort of get signed early on but he's now been working with them for multiple weeks when you're looking at the two pitches between Miller and Syndergaard you know they both, at, at least as right now, the way the Dodgers roster is constructed, are going to have to. It seems like they're going to have to play a significant role for the team in this season. Is there one? Is there one of the two that you think the Dodgers will, you know, kind of need to need more so than the other? Um, I'd probably go with Noah Syndergaard just because there's so many question marks in the rotation. Kershaw's had his injury problems. Gonsolin and May both have injury problems. Julio is really the only guy who's kind of set in where you're comfortable with. And then their depth, they're three rookies. So I feel like they're going to need Syndergaard to eat a lot of innings and provide some stability there. And with Syndergaard specifically, he mentioned in uh, his kind of introductory press conference, it was done over Zoom, which we have uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel if you guys want to watch that after this. He mentioned, you know, kind of getting back to his old self and really throwing away everything he did in 2022 because it, he didn't really consider it being him. And he thinks that he can get his velocity back up to 100 miles an hour. And he said, or maybe even more. Do you see that as being possible? Or do you think, you know, he the velocity may not come back, but with some other changes, the Dodgers can get him, you know, being pretty effective? I mean, it's probably possible. I, I'm not sure how his shoulder is actually holding up for his elbow. Yeah, I think he had Tommy John. So, yeah. like. I don't know enough about his medical history or what was keeping him from throwing 100 miles per hour, so it's really hard to say. But if he's confident in it, he can probably add a few miles per hour at least. I know he wasn't throwing very hard with the Angels, and his strikeout numbers dropped a lot. So if he can get back some of that velocity and he's hopeful about it, I see some reason to have some faith in that. 
Yeah, so to to kind of answer, I don't want to necessarily speak for Noah Syndergaard. Like I said, his interview is up on our YouTube channel, so you guys can definitely go watch that and hear what he had to say himself. I'll paraphrase here. He basically said that his he changed his uh, training routine just because when he at when the whole t- when Tommy John was happening, he heard from I don't know if it was train it wasn't clear if it was trainers or doctors that he's too big of a pitcher and he needs to kind of slim down a little bit. He has too much bulk. And he thinks that that was a factor. And he also believes that kind of throwing throughout the recovery process and then getting right back into games two without much rest may have ultimately sort of backfired. And he said his body, you know, went into kind of like fight or flight mode type thing. And he's not 100%, he's not 100% sure what happened. But anyway, he's confident that he'll be able to move past it. Uh, let's transition really quick a little bit to Jason Hayward. Obviously, he's more of a lottery ticket than Miller and Syndergaard are in the sense that he's a minor league deal. So, to even make an impact with the Dodgers, there's a couple steps he needs to, you know, put together strong spring training, earn a 40 man roster spot, and then potentially get added to the opening day roster. I know we're it's tough to you know sort of project at this point in the off season, but do you how viable or likely do you see Hayward breaking camp with the team? I don't really see him making the team out of spring training. He'll probably be minor league depth for a bit and keep working on a swing or whatever they want him to work on. But I feel like at some point he could come up and help. He's never been a really good hitter. He's always been a defense first guy. So I don't have a ton of faith in his offense. But we've also seen crazier things like Matt Carpenter this year in his age 37 season or whatever he is now came out and was hitting better than Aaron Judge before he got hurt. So it can happen. I mean, if they help him with something and get it going, sure. Yeah, I think what's also interesting, too, with Hayward is The signing came while, you know, reports and even Dave Roberts admitted to, you know, the Dodgers are looking for a left hand, a center fielder specifically, and one who hits left handed. And Hayward hits left handed and he has experience in center field, but not that much recently. Do you see him as a potential option or in center field at some point, even if it's later in the year? Do you think he would be more of a corner outfielder? I mean, I think he's a corner outfielder. That's where he's been most of his career. He's won his gold gloves in right field. But I think he could handle center field if they need him. I just don't think he'd be an everyday guy there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that wraps up that wrap. Excuse me, wraps up this video. Uh, we hope to bring you more uh, if there are additional signings or potential trades. I know fans are kind of waiting on uh, first and foremost the Trevor Bauer news that's supposed to be coming this week, and we'll kind of see where things go from there. Again, my name's Matt. That was Blake. Thanks for joining us.